hands together. Let's hold hands together and just pray in the spirit. I know that we're excited, but let's go ahead and pray. There's a lot to do tonight. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Let your heart be open. Everywhere, whether you are inside, outside, you're following online. Pray in the spirit. Anda baratu sedek de balakatapus, jete pakaruta sete prete gete barate gete balada pakata prete gete balade bush, janda tapra sedek de balade pakata barada balada bush. Please pray, don't be distracted. Shekro tu sutu barada balada bush, shada balakata prete gete balada bush. Ata prende di sia da balaku sia da barus, mande bratus kata bradisha de bradiki apa? Pray in the spirit, don't be tired. Allah bade brahesa de balakata. Don't mind the weakness of your flesh. You go ahead and pray. Sali bara hasada balakata frende gede belekatos. Shada prada gada balakata frende gede belekato prada skada bahara katos. Embra katos shabra dige de balada bas. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please pay yourselves into two if you can. And for the next few minutes, I just want you to hold your hands of that neighbor and begin to pray in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. Let your attention be on Jesus and your destiny. No distractions. Pray house of David. In the lena sana makata brada gada balakatos. Shebrende gasa brada gada balagada brandi gede balada. Legada brande soto para katu shebrandi gada balakata kadia dagata. Shekete kata balakata brash. Shekete kete balakata brash sada balada. Mande kata brade shekete le kata bria da balada balakatu. Embra bakatu sodo brahete kete balakata brade gada balada bash. Manda paka brada kata brada kata brada kata kata balakatu. Ente le kete brash kada balakata mari katu shabre de gede. Rakata baranda kata brade kese le kata barada. Pray, pray. Salakata brade gede lakata. Shekete brake to la sada 
Rabradakata, Embre Soto Parado Seketo Shabaruta, Mande Kalakato Shakreto Sadabalakata, Endecreto Sadi Bradakata, Jede Kato Sabriada Balakata, Brakato Shadiakata. Shana mashana balakata bris eteke teke 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 te rakato parabato soto pradakata sharakato sabre dega dega de balakato manta parato soto predega te barakata liakata shima katos karatos keba shiba hasiatakan imbrega teke 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 te prakato zeke te balakato shekeria nabakata. Shemakoto sobon shabaratos shekete kete 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 rakata barakato prete kete bokoto shoto prete inte zona kata bria sadamash mande kato sabrati kaparoto shopre kete kete shekete kete kete pakara kata baria kata baroto shoto prete outside make sure you are praying. At the Sunday school, make sure you are praying. Online, make sure you are praying. Let a pacoroto sopra cato shata bricate. Zamokoto shona bacaracato sabrica de baladabas. Lecate brande sana baladabasia da bala. Racata bradecate le macuroto soto bregadia bala. Ente poro soto brega seneca dabas. Sanecato sabras cabarato sia la baras. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I insist that I must have an encounter tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I insist. I insist. I must have an encounter tonight. Hala bato sabarakato shada, and asana malakato pratekete bahasa dadash. Lord, that anointing for my ministry, that unction for my destiny, sana kato shabriatash. Something must fall upon me tonight that will cause my generation to hear your voice through my lips. Prada to sabre nekalebane. Habarosa de Calabo We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. I release. The sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. I'm prophesying to the atmosphere. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Shekinah is here. I cry holy, holy. Unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. I sing holy, 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 unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation. Shekinah is here Yahweh, Yahweh
Yahweh. Sing it unto him. Yahweh. One more time. Yahweh. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a dove. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm seeing a dove and I'm seeing it resting on people. I see the number 34. 34. That dove is a representation of a dimension of the Holy Spirit. I stretch my hands right now. 34. That anointing is finding you now. 34 people inside this place and outside. Right now, please help them. I stretch my hands right now. The spirit of the living God. You don't have to bring them out. Just, just, even if you have to bring them out, don't bring them out. The minister stand here. You can just keep them somewhere there. I stretch my hands right now. That anointing is coming on someone right now. Coming on someone's life. Coming on someone's life. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. Hallelujah. I'm seeing something that I saw yesterday at our miracle service. I'm seeing coals of fire. We're going to sit down shortly. But I'm seeing coals of fire. And I'm seeing it being dropped on the hands of people. And as I'm saying it right now, physically, you are going to feel that fire on your hand. Right now, it's happening to people, not everybody. But I'm stretching my hands. That fire. The spirit of revival is in this place. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. The spirit of prophecy. We're going to sit down shortly. Just let me do what I'm doing. The spirit of prophecy. In fact, I'm even seeing people outside not even those in the auditorium i'm seeing the spirit of prophecy and literally right now people within here and outside people are going to begin to laugh in the spirit and they will begin to prophesy right now i release that grace please stop. i release that grace just a symbol let me hear you. right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i stretch my hands please help them just bring them to the front and keep them. Whether you are an usher or not, please help them so they don't destroy anything. Right now, I stretch my hands. The spirit of prophecy. Bring them out somewhere here. In the name of Jesus. You call it a total experience. That grace, that grace, that grace. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation. Shekinah is here. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation. Shekinah is here. Feel me, Yaka. Feel me, Yaka. Feel me, Yaka. Feel me, Yaka. Please give me volume, Mike. Feel me, Yaka.
Spirit of the living God, we are here for a total experience. You have put it upon the heart of your servant, the angel of this house, to shift your people into seasons in the Spirit and to shift this church, to shift this city. Lord, the anointing for this meeting, the grace for this meeting, in the name that is above all names, as I teach your word tonight, let there be a supernatural activity of angels. Call men, O oh God, into deep dimensions in the spirit. Let there be an initiation into dimensions and levels of spiritual understanding, of power, of grace. In the name of Jesus. Let's just be silent for a minute if you can, except just for those under the anointing. Hmm. The spirit of the living God is shifting us. Shifting us. Shifting us. I'm seeing a shift in the spirit. It's like a wind that is blowing. A shift. It's an experience you will never forget. Whether you are online, at the Sunday school, outside. Let that shift happen. We are spiritual people. We allow that shift to happen. That shift is happening right now in the spirit. I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons. Thank you, sound. Your daughters will prophesy. Just a few minutes and we'll be seated. This is why we're here. The Lord is opening spiritual eyes. Hmm. The Lord is opening spiritual eyes. I'm seeing a notebook and a biro. It's a manifestation of the spirit of revelation. Never will you see things just from a physical standpoint. You will begin to see the spirit behind operations. Tonight, the Holy Spirit is revealing himself in this place as fire. It's a mystery that we must understand fire while my physical eyes are closed my eyes are open in the spirit fire is a mystery that refines is a mystery that prunes is a mystery that separates is a mystery that purifies is a mystery that burns and is a mystery that makes a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings please blow Blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with One more time. Blow, blow, say blow, blow, blow like a mighty spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Sing blow, blow, blow like a spirit of victory. Bless our 
hearts, O God, in the name of Jesus. Let your word prevail. Let there be a breaking tonight. Let there be a pruning tonight. Let there be a refining tonight. Let there be a lifting tonight. Let there be healings tonight. Let there be deliverance tonight. Let there be prophecies tonight. Let there be impartations tonight. Let there be turnarounds tonight. Let there be decisions tonight. Let there be restorations tonight. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated and be sensitive while you do so. Pastor Shola, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. May the Lord bless you, household of David. I love you with all my heart. My spirit is fired up. It's my joy to be here. I appreciate all of us who are here. Um, I want to commend your pastor for the sacrifice of engaging a church to pray and seek the face of God. Um, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see, one of the secrets one of the secrets of impact it doesn't matter if like pastor said um, don't worry even if those outside they just need to hear me and connect you just tell them they don't necessarily have to come in if they can I know they would want to come in but trust me trust me there is the only difference between those inside and outside spiritually speaking is convenience hallelujah we get to points in our lives where we need to take out time with God please come sir no matter how great you are no matter how anointed you are no matter how blessed you are for as long as you are walking upon this earth, please listen, let me have your attention. Times come, not once, not twice in your life where you will need to dedicate moments, not a day. Are we together? To seek the face of God. Not just because it's a routine, but because the urgency that surrounds the season of your life one of the keys to shifting people to the next level is that God begins to put a burden in them for the secret place. He won't tell you yet that this is what is happening to you. All of a sudden, you will sense an unusual hunger. When a season has come in your life, usually you find out that the urge to stay alone, that calling into the secret place, are we together now? It's already a sign. It's an indication by the Spirit that you are wrapping up an old season and you are about to enter a new one. Listen, but this is also the area where Satan has mastery. If you miss that junction, it can cost you sometimes another 10 years to turn around and get back to that level. Satan doesn't just attack people every day. No, he waits for these Kairos seasons. He knows. Remember, he was white, the light bearer. And he knows that men move in faces and seasons. So if he failed to stop you when you were born, then he will be waiting for you when you need to go to the cross. He, he doesn't just attack every day. He left Jesus and said, I know another moment when I will meet him. That's why God will usually say fast. It's not just a religious activity. No. No. Is because you are building capacity for the seasons. There are many things in our lives, brothers and sisters, that demand extended periods of waiting upon the Lord. You see, not every decision in your life has equal implication. You don't need to fast to know what clothes to wear. You just need common sense and a sense of convenience. Are we together? But there are major decisions Lord, who do I settle down for the rest of my life with? 
Lord, do I relocate in Lagos or go abroad? There are many people, the devil destroyed them by giving them visas. Are we together? They found their way out of the will of God. Just because a visa was stamped on their passport, they believed it was the will of God. It takes sensitivity to know what is favor and what is deception because they all look the same. Is God speaking to us tonight? Lord, do I get into ministry? Do I quit that job? Look, there are sensitive decisions in our lives that the, the entire relevance of our lives and destinies are tied to them. You don't make those decisions sleeping. When Jesus needed to select 12 men who would work with him for three years and later become the apostles of the Lamb, that the foundations of the new heaven will be built after their names. That even the foundations of the new Jerusalem carries the name of the 12 apostles. The Bible says he stayed up night praying. Because with your eyes, you will see Eliab and think he's the anointed of God. Do you know that walking in the flesh is the major reason why people never become relevant to a generation? The flesh is deceptive. The flesh will tell you this is God. And everything in your life will prove that it is God. Until you wait, you will see the deception of the flesh. There is something about waiting, not just praying waiting many pray but we don't wait to wait doesn't just mean to pray to wait means to wait are we together now yes pastor it's amazing the destiny decisions that people take laughing they take it drinking minerals I, I like this lady can I go and see your parents and this gentleman wants to live for 40 years it's not a degree that even if you don't like, you just close your eyes and do it and throw away the certificate. When Satan knows that Isaac is coming, he will push Hagar very fast because he knows if God wants to give you 20 million next week, the devil will give you 2 million now. Five, five naira. So that it looks plenty. Too distracting for you to go and say no. Our generation has lost the art of waiting until God. That's why we don't have convictions. Because you see, when you, when you get information from convictions, you will die there. I had God. I know what I saw. But this person you married, how come you don't have a child? I know what I had. I was not taking minerals. It was not in a beauty contest that I found her. I would die here. Marry another wife for where? The God that showed me that vision. Let that God bring the child. Conviction. Today, you see someone start a ministry. And after two years of five members, he just says, look, looks like that one. I will just go and add MSc to my degree so that I can just get a job. As though it was lack of a job that took him to the vineyard. No conviction. Because we hardly respect the secret place. Many things happen there. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. You will never change a generation if you do not understand the power of waiting. There are Kairos seasons in our lives. Times, every time in a student's life, he's required to be serious. But when Wayek is coming close, he is not just serious. It's an opportune time. It's with that result he can go to the university. So it's true that he should read every day. But during WAEC, you see students with all kinds of skills. Coffee. Um, cold water. And nobody tells them, ah, it's too much. Mm -mm. They say, you better take that coffee and sit down and study. Because it's an opportune time. Listen. Not everything can be recovered at the same time. Listen, listen. Some recoveries, even if they come, the challenges they have created is something you may have to live with forever. Are we together now? And it becomes more dangerous when you are a shepherd. 
because you see it's easy to be a follower you just need to be sure and trust that the leader is hearing God if he throws you somewhere you call God and say Lord I, I follow this man diligently look at where he took me now but when you are a leader you have to be sure you are hearing God because you see there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but it is the end so you can be thinking you are right for 10 years then the 11th year you find out you are wrong but within those 10 years, you have mentored people along your error. And then by the 11th year, you don't know how to turn now and start saying, sorry, yo, hi. So the boastful statement I made in year 8 and 9 was still a lie. Are we together now? The Bible says, even the young men, listen carefully, even the young men will be weary. The youth will utterly fall very critical decisions and we go on the internet what to do ministry or business enter and we smile and then we sit down and wonder why God cannot trust us with the grace for a generation listen it's one thing to have the anointing upon you as a believer it's another thing to have the anointing upon you according to the office that God has called you in. But it's another thing to have the anointing for God's emphasis in a generation. Listen, these are three levels of the anointing. You can have the anointing as a believer. You can have the anointing with your office. But for every move of God, God finds men who have aligned enough and there is a grace that's why I can be anointed, but a season will come. You know I'm not in God's program in that season. I'm anointed, but for whatever reason, you know that in this season, this man did not align himself to be featured in God's program. Is God speaking to us? So when you see God corporately calling a church to pray and fast, my brothers and my sisters, it's not a time to mourn. Forget about what happens to your outward man. You see, we, we are a very carnal generation. And, and it's not an insult. It's a description. It's the reason why inconvenience tortures us too much. Just because you are losing weight. Just because of a little inconvenience. Just because there is no AC. Just because while you are worshipping your trouser tears. You know, all this. We, we are so embarrassed. We carry our entire ego and put it upon it. When a student is going to write exam, if you are rushing to go and write your final paper and your wig removes and the door is about to be shut, please talk to me, intelligent people. Do you, do you just turn and say, ah, the gentlemen are going to laugh at me. There is a desperation requirement that you must have for the gates of destiny to be opened. There is a, a requisite level of desperation over God. Desperation that is greater than the comfort of your body. Desperation that is greater than the comfort of your belly. Desperation that is greater than your reputation. Desperation that is greater than name. Hmm. Are we together? So when you set yourself to seek his face... The devil will bring all kinds of nuisances around your life. Oh, a new movie just came out. A new this and that. And God says, no. Remember, you're in a season. That person is not in their season. So they can afford to be careless and play around. But you are in a season. While we're, you know, in the plane coming, I was so tired. I, I barely slept this morning. And then we had to head for the airport. And then I just laid down and the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, son, you are entering your season of glory. It's not for my word. You can receive it, but I'm telling you what God told me. You see, the moment God said that, what do you think a wise Christian should do? Just jump, hallelujah. No, that you wore a good warfare. Because when that announcement comes, the devil hears it too. You are not the only one who had it. And Satan will say, all right, you are entering your season of glory. What can we use to abort? The seasons can be aborted. 
Yes, sir. The Lord was in this place and I knew not. That means my time of visitation should have come. But something happened. There was a lot of carelessness in my spirit. That's why you find certain people. They can do well in a particular season. Even in ministry. Then they get to a level. They never move again. They miss the season. I tell you that's what happened. Because you see sometimes the comfort of success can blind you from knowing when seasons come. You can, I mean, if it's, it's easy to fast when, when you don't have enough to eat. You, you have a justification that is already tilted towards fasting. So you can as well just fast. But what happens when you are comfortable? It's harder to seek God when you have results than when you don't. So I assume that all the people inside here and outside are people who are truly passionately seeking God. There are meetings where you must love God to come. If you really came for that meeting, then you loved God. Are we together? It takes hunger. It takes hunger. My brothers and my sisters, this glory, this power, this grace that we see, God is not a magician. It doesn't just fall on people. Don't mind people who just make it look like you just go and fetch it anywhere. No, sir. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. I've told you this. There are things that are rewards. There is no shortcut to it. No matter how healthy a woman is, it's nine months straight. You don't give birth to a child. No matter how healthy the child is, you don't give birth to a child who just jumps down. And says, I'm so healthy. No, whether you give birth to the child in a hospital in Buckingham Palace is going to be from crying to sucking and then grow. Some things in life cannot be hurried. You have to just pass through it. What You don't pray that the season be accelerated. You pray for grace to pass through it. Until you finish that spiritual curriculum, the class you miss will tell in life. You can miss lectures in the physical and read up and write an exam, but not destiny. I can look at you and know that you miss character 101, character 501, this one. You press for the anointing, but you miss this area. Are we together? So we are not here tonight just to celebrate miracles, although that will happen. But I'm telling you tonight is a night where God wants to give us an encounter with dimensions. You see, when God wants to bless you, he doesn't give you money. Hear me. When God wants to bless you, he doesn't give you a house. No. When God wants to bless you, he doesn't give you a shop. He doesn't give you a job. He gives you what money cannot buy. I always use examples. Look at this. I think I've used that example here. My dear, please come. Come stand here. This is my phone. Hold it, please. This is a product. Is that true? Just lift it up so they see it. Assuming this is 1,000 Naira. If this lady wants to buy this phone, what do I give her? So this is the capital that buys this. Is that true? Now, what if this is what she wants? What is the capital that buys this one? If it's true that this is what buys this, then what is it that buys this? The name of the capital that buys this is called true riches. That's what God gives men. He doesn't give men money. This, this is man-made. Unfortunately, this is what people labor for. Listen carefully. Is the reason why people are about to die of heart attack now. Is the reason why people leave God. God is saying, come let me give you something that will make both the rich and poor need you. And they say, oh God, no, no, just connect me to one uncle somewhere. And God is saying, what are you saying? When you go to your uncle, you have to sit at his terms. But when he calls because something you have, you see if I told you that as you are sitting down now you are becoming wealthy you won't believe it because what you are thinking about is 
If I say, let's share one, 1,000, you say, ah, what kind of a church is this? I'm coming back next week. But you don't know that God blesses men by giving them true riches. Halagbara, you are the mighty God. Eilatobiju, you are the glorious Halagbara. Nigerians who will never pay attention to the word because they think it's a distraction. We have been indoctrinated that church is just an avenue for men of God to raise money. And so every time we come, we just look at it and ah, okay, this one that is coming now, how much am I giving? No, sir. No, sir. God draws people. He calls a solemn assembly to lift your life, to give you something that money cannot buy. If all you have can be bought with money, you don't have much. Let me say it again. If all you have can be bought with money, then you don't have much. But there is something he can put in your destiny. The things that matter are things that money cannot buy. So it will make both the rich and the poor to listen to you. Don't you know that what you are looking for is only poor people that will come to you? Well, the people don't need some of these things. But there is something that can come from heaven. It can be bought in any market. You don't see a fake version of it. That God can put something in your life. And you can run back home and say, Mama, I found a key. She said, you mean you got a job? He said, no. If it was a job, I wouldn't dance this much. I found something. What is that something? I found a key. A key that will make a generation hear you. I found a key. A key that will make both the rich and poor to sit and listen. I found a key. A key that vetoes your background. Vetoes whatever territory. What is that key? I found it. That key is a man. It's not a thing. It's not an object you turn left and right. I found the key. Have you found it? There are people who have found this thing. I found your word. I did eat it. It was a joy and a rejoicing. When I found this thing, I rejoiced. I knew my life, it was over. Some of us who didn't have the privilege of coming from good backgrounds. What is your bailout system in this wicked world? Where someone can look at you and say, I know your father. You are as poor and stupid as your father. But when he puts it upon you, Jesus. Please sit down and listen to what I'm teaching you. Your pastor put this meeting because he loves you. The thing we are chasing for will never give us the result we want. Find out the various reasons why you are distracted from spiritual things. Number one, Naira and Kobo. You don't know that this money itself is a living thing. There is a reason why it runs away from you. Money is not an object. I was teaching yesterday pastor the bible says in ecclesiastes i think i'm seven or so it says money is a defense wisdom too is a defense that means money is a weapon is that true i'm not talking about money i'm just using it and the bible says our weapons are not carnal so it is a weapon god knows you need the money as a weapon but he says it is not carnal not man-made this was made by cbn that means this is not what God is talking about. Because he says that it's man-made. Pastor, the various reasons why people leave God is amazing. The average believer has indoctrinated himself into believing that God is an option for losers. When you try useful things in your life and they don't work, just console yourself because you are surely on your way to heaven. Poverty will send you to, you know, they have this idea. So they say, just seek God. Oh. And you see people drag themselves like they're going to a graveyard, all in the name of God. Whoever taught you that men seek God and lose? Whoever taught you that just because you are seeking God and you don't have a rent and just because you are seeking God and one or two things are not in place. 
Don't let a carnal generation make God look like a cheap commodity. God is priceless. Find out those who sought him and how they changed their generation. You are looking for a job. God wants to make you a voice. You are looking for a little opportunity to build a small duplex. Whereas God wants to make your name a key to men's destinies. That someone can come and say, well, I graduated with third class. But um, I, I, I just had to greet my uncle before coming here. Say, who is your uncle? Say, Pastor Sholai. Say, Pastor Sholai is your uncle. Come, you will be my secretary. Sorry, sir. I said I studied. It's not about what you studied. If Pastor Shola listens to you, then I know that you can come here. A man can become a key. God told me this years ago. Listen. He said, son, if you will make men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I think you've heard my story. I'm sorry I'm starting this way. You can see that. Just let me do what I'm doing. Eh? I came to bless you. Pastor, years ago, I went to Ibadan. There's a, there's a hotel called, uh, what's the name now? Uphill. Premier Hotel. I remember going there years ago. It was night. And I went there. I knew that, I mean, nobody, I mean, if, 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 how they didn't even throw me out of that place is, is even a miracle. I went there. There was no place to sleep. There was no money. There was nothing. I saw wealthy people come in. They just parked. They went and I looked. I said, oh dear. I saw small children of rich people just jump around and touch anything. They are not afraid whether it breaks or not. And I was just watching. How unfair life can be. It was night there. I had to come down and look for a church that was having a vigil. Not because I wanted to attend a vigil. Are we together? And I stood in front of that hotel. I said, one day, God will bring me here with honor. I may not have what it takes in terms of business prowess or whatever achievement, but I have someone who, a real Godfather. A few years later, I would be ushered to that same place. And at the highest, um, what they call it, the suit there, I went with this, my gentleman. And I mean, they were swimming, they were jumping, playing table tennis, and I was looking at them from my window. I said, God, you told me this. You told me, you told me that if I walked with you, no man would laugh at me for long. You told me. There is something God can give you that money cannot buy. So when he calls you and says, my daughter, seek me, my son, seek me, forget about the hunger that happens for 30 days. Because whether you are fasting or not, many of us, the hunger is still there. So it's better for it to be there for 30 days and then live for the rest of your life. Are we together? Many of us have come from backgrounds where honestly speaking, except something supernatural happens, there is no possibility of rising to any dimension. And God calls you. He calls you and men interpret his calling as an inconvenience. Lord, why are you distracting me? Are you not satisfied with the five minutes I gave you? If you want, I can bribe you with another five minutes before I sleep. Mumble some tongues and open my Bible and read one verse. It should be enough for you. And God says, I want to help you. I thought I saw you crying and I came to you now. And he said, Lord, I need money. This is what I need. If it's not money you are knocking my door with, go back. I need raw money straight. And God is saying, if I bless you with money alone, I still cheated you. But someone can kneel down and say, Lord, I may not have much now. I'm not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. I may not come from a great family like Gideon. But Lord, I heard that when you find men, you make wonders out of them. I'm available. I may not be much. I may not have all the parameters that men use to measure success. And God says, just trust me. Ah, oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. 
Oh God, you are my God And I will ever love you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever trust you I will seek you in the morning And I have learned to walk in your ways For step by step you lead me And I will follow you all of my days One more time, step by step For step by step you lead me And I will follow you all of my days I'm starting my teaching tonight by reorienting your passion for God. God has monetary value. God has destiny value. God is not just an option that adds to the thing in your life. So I'm a spiritual businessman. So I'm successful. I'm an intelligent graduate who is working in an oil company. But just because I want to go to heaven, I decided to pay attention to God. No. If you place an advert of a business seminar, people rush there. Why? Because you see the value there. Is that true? Yeah. When you place a job advert, people rush. But when you place an advert, come and seek him and know him. People say this distraction called God. God, there is a track record. They will say it directly, but their lives will show. When people are seeking God, they ask them, are you working? They say, no, I'm just managing. I'm waiting for a job. But I see you spending time in his presence. They say, oh, what will I do? There's no job, so let me just be doing this before then. Oh, dear. I have learned that this my God, when God holds your hand, and decides to lift you pastor shola it will amaze you you will stand in awe and join those clapping for you to wonder and say god who are you could it be that i don't know you is this how you lift men is this how you can turn a man's life around do we not know that saul when did saul become a prophet and god says when you add me to the equation of a man's life I've said it, one plus one plus God is equal to any answer he wants. One plus one is two, but one plus one plus God can be one million. Listen to me. Let me challenge you here. If in case you just came for this meeting just because you felt your friend just pressured you to come and you're saying, okay, let's while away time. It's a Saturday. I want you to change your mind see it as someone calling you to say I want to change your life pastor you know we say this all the time one encounter in God's presence will change people's life they just say amen but truly they don't believe when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold my hands impossible becomes possible say when you hold my hand everything everything becomes possible when you hold my hand everything becomes possible When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. Listen, stay with him 
and you will see those you are looking for come to you the bible says the gentiles will come to your light forget about those laughing at you my brother stay with him with your torn trouser and your 200 naira shoe there's no need of faking it why fake what can be real stay with him and watch the wonder he will make out of your life that a day will come you will sit down and say God what have you turned my life to what have you turned my life to I can tell you that this God we serve is not a scam don't get used to people cheating and defrauding you and add God to the list this man standing before you is a testimony that when God holds your hand a generation must hear you it has nothing to do with sentiments are we together now yes sacrifice let me tell you a, a, a very humorous uh, something that that happened um, I went somewhere to preach and um, you notice there's a lot of scarring in my face I went somewhere to preach and you know was a big sacrifice there and um, I mean after the whole thing I don't know whether it was the water or something and I mean this thing just messed up my face and all of that and I turned I said Lord all this sacrifice I'm doing this is for the gospel my face is paying the price and everything is paying the price and then I was praying just today and the Lord just spoke to me and said, do you not know that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed? When I came in here, Pastor, I quickly sent, I said they should find me, a, maybe a dermatologist or someone to just come and look at my face. And they got a woman somewhere. And when she came, that woman had been praying to God to come to Zaria for koinonia so listen so when she heard that they said we want you to come and look at apostle she, she couldn't believe it when she came she said I told her I said, how, much? She said how much what <laughs> when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold my Prophesy to yourself one more time. When you hold, you hold my hand, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hand, everything becomes possible. When your uncle holds your hand, some things are not possible. Many uncles have held their hands even when we're going down. It's not that they wanted to throw you down. It's that they were men too. Are we together now? Your certificate held your hands. In fact, you held it and you were still going down with it. But when he holds your hand and says, seek me, seek me. You say, oh God, I'm, I'm tired. I need to marry. There's a guy I saw, oh God. And he said, look, you are, if, if it's just by browsing facebook and whatsapp you will not you will marry a foolish man stay with me let me walk on you and you will see what i can do with esther when she avails herself the call to seek god is a call to change your life the call to seek god is not a favor to honor a man's vision the call to seek God and wait upon God is not an inconvenience just to come and repent when you have sinned. No. God is saying, I have heard your cry. Prepare a solemn assembly. I want to visit you. I want to change your life. Some of you right now, there are businesses you would have been doing. Maybe you left your shop and left whatever and you are here and the devil is telling you, imagine 15,000 now, 30,000 and God is saying, what are you saying? 15,000, 30,000 and the wicked Luciferian spirit that disturbs members when the word of God is coming 
they sit down and calculate and somebody just calls and says, are you going to give me or not? I mean, I can transfer 100,000 right now. And God says, sit down. And you round up and go back feeling cheated. God, you cheated me. I would have made 100,000 this night. And God says, is this what I'm worth to you? 100,000. Whereas a day will come, somebody will be holding a check of a million naira. And he says, can I have the privilege of giving you? And you say, God is a lie. I'm joking. God says it's not a lie. That's what happens when men seek. When Jesus was born, a star rose. It was so bright, men could not deny it. And the Magi carried their gift and started following the star. It's always a star that leads you to a person. Brothers and sisters, listen. Listen to me. I don't know what background spiritually that we've had. But I call you tonight, even as we prepare to pray, return back to seeking God as, as a means of living, as a livelihood. Because it truly is. Don't see God as some part-time distraction. Angry while you are opening your Bible in the morning. Oh, Psalm 60 now. Kai, this Psalm is long. I thought it was 12 verses. Ah, is it that the devotional made a mistake? What is all this one? I need to hurry up. You see, that, that is a very wicked spirit because he wants to destroy you. But you can go and sit down in a man's office after six hours. He said, you are still here. Be patient. He said, you are just happy that he passed and was aware you are there. He said, I hope you are not tired. Say, me, Abba, Uncle, we are tired for where? I'm a young man. It's a job I'm looking for. While you are laughing, I hope you are getting what I'm saying. I came here sincerely to challenge and shake you up and down. There are many men of God, Pastor, carrying cards all around. I'm a man of God. I promise you, if you invite me, even you, you will know that God is at work in my life. My brother, with all due respect, the fact that you are running around seeking people, seeking opportunities. The Bible says neither do men light a lamp. That's the secret. It's not the lamp, it's the light on it. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, but it does no good if it's just like that. But there is a fire that must come. When that fire comes, even if you put it under a bushel, it will burn it and make sure everybody knows there's fire there. There are many music artists carrying their albums, running around, begging and saying, Pastor, I hear there's a program. I'm anointed. The other day, I thought you had my song. Didn't you like what you had? See, that, those is a wrong approach. It's an analog and wicked approach that leads to bitterness and envy. The greatest way to publicize yourself is to remain in the secret place. That when you are in the secret place, you are making more noise than you know. You come out of that secret place. And as a man of God, you go for just one meeting. And God will make it such that all your destiny helpers are seated in front of you. And while they are hearing you, this one is saying, we've gotten the last speaker for our conference. This one is saying, we've gotten the next one. And you turn back and say, God, this is how you change people. Whereas there's somebody begging around. They say, okay, 10 minutes. Oh yeah, hurry up. And you come up the pressure because you are not anointed you will talk nonsense and the people will not be blessed the other pastor will say i told you let this be the last time this man ever comes for our program it pays to seek god not just serve him it pays to seek god we seek his hands we seek his miracles we seek anointing, which is not bad. But my brothers and my sisters, none of this is the face of God. You must be passionate. Passionate. Seeking God will cost you a lot. Let me be very honest in the name of honesty. Let me open you up to the truth. Seeking God will cost you a lot. The Christianity of convenience while you are seeking God is a joke. The convenience comes as a reward when you have found that which he gives you in the secret place. And sometimes we have to be honest. You see, as men of God, sometimes we make the mistake of pitying people who are starting out with God 
and we make them to compare their lives with our current results and rush them out of their seasons of training. Are we together now? The brother is fasting and trusting God for his finances and studying. And sometimes you just look and say, this guy, this night be jail for 30,000. I'm a mistake. No. Let him encounter Jehovah Jireh. Something is happening. Are we together now? Your pastor today can give out a million naira and by evening it has returned because there is a track record. Something has been built in the spirit to produce that result. So no matter how they love you, you have to start. You have to create your own track record. Not everything in this kingdom is impartable. There are track records that you must create by yourself. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Seeking God will cost you your time. It will cost you your time. Anything you love, you have time for. Your job, your children, your wife, your husband, your business, you have time for it. Whether rain is falling or not, you know this is Monday, I should be at my shop. You defy that rain. Seek God. He said, I rather, I, I rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. Passion. Seeking God will cost you your time. Lagos, I know we are busy people. I acknowledge this is a cosmopolitan city. This is a, a very value-driven city. But I call you once again to a place where men give God time. If you give God time, he will give you something that is worth your time. Are we together? God is speaking to someone right now. I need more of your time. That's what God is telling someone. I need more of your time. These five minutes every day, these ten minutes every day, this sitting down praying while you snore, 80% of the prayer time is sleep. God is saying, I need your time and with that time I need your seriousness. Seeking God will cost you a lot of things. Sadly, it may cost you a lot of pain. This is why when you talk against someone that God has anointed, even in the secret, you will be punished in the open. Not because God is unfair. The sacrifice that it takes to attain that level in the spirit is a sacrifice God guards with his own jealousy. He said he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. Saying, touch not, not a believer, mine anointed, not the anointed, my like my property, don't touch my wife. Are we together now? Are you ready to go through the pain that it will take to seek God? Don't just look at the glory. It takes pain. Because sometimes in seeking God, you will be strange. You will be against status quo. Men will misunderstand you. And say, why is this lady always running around church? So this is how far this husband thing has become. Hapa, take it easy. And you will feel stupid for seeking God. You will feel stupid for coming for prayer in the morning. And you will almost be tempted to say, Pastor, I think God has calmed me. Let me just go back. And God says, just when your miracle is coming. I've made up my mind that if I perish, brothers and sisters, I perish. But me and God, we have, it's a salt covenant, inseparable it's not because of what he's doing today. I love him desperately and truly. There's no amount of pain that I will not go. Pain means nothing to me when it comes to the love. For my love for God. We're a very pain averse generation. And pain is something that you don't intentionally go and embrace. However, every successful person knows there is a pain factor. I, I wish that I were lying. I would have just apologized to you and said, okay, I'm joking. But I'm very serious. The birth of anything valuable is painful. That includes your destiny. Ask every mother here, they will tell you. No matter what kind of prayer warrior you are, no matter how supernatural the birth is, the memory of some level of travail. So whoever told you, that your destiny will just come as a platter of gold. My brother, my sister, it will take a price. It's costly. 
the bigger the destiny, the bigger you will need to push. It is as soon as Zion travails that she will put forth. There may be a man or woman of God sitting here and outside hearing me. You have seen visions of the great ministry that God is calling you into. But my brother and my sister, it will not just happen by running around and hoping and buying, finding how much a suit, a suit is and how much um, a good tailor can show you traditionals. That's not how to prepare for ministry. You prepare for ministry that way you won't last one year. I, I guarantee you is to stay in the secret place. Are we together now? And it will cost you pain. There are times that others will go ahead and while you want to join them, God says, you wait. And God will say, no, don't rob me. God, I want to enjoy life too. I'm a social person too. And God says, for two weeks, you are not going on Facebook. He said, God, did I do anything wrong? No. He says, it's my training for you. And he says, so God, just me, you now isolated me. God says, I thought you said you want to be Esther. I thought you said you want to be Elijah. For three months, you are not going to watch a single movie. I said, ah, God, just when this film came out, that I, I, I will, allow me to watch it and I can sacrifice any other thing. It's not about the film. He's ascending the throne of your heart to make sure he becomes the epicenter of your all. Are we together now? There are times that you just receive your salary and God says, carry your salary on your way to household of David. Meet Pastor Sholan. So you say, no, this is a devil. God doesn't work like that. This has to be a spirit that is not of God. And God says, well, I've spoken once. It's your responsibility to hear twice. I've spoken. And you carry it and feel like a dead man while you are coming to church. Even while they are praying, as people are dancing, you are standing. Why am I doing this? Now, listen. You are laughing. But you see, it's because I'm acting it. That's why you are laughing. When it is happening in real life, you will not be laughing. It's a sacrifice. They say, sit down. You don't even know when they said you should sit down. You are standing. Somebody taps you and says, are you aware? They say, oh, all right, sit down. And then you carry that seed. And you are just angry at pastor while you are standing. God, this is a rich man. God, what are you doing to me like this? And you drop that seed. And don't even have a transport fare to go back. Don't be ashamed of your pain. Many of us think it's unusual. It's because many of us, now I'm speaking apostolically. I know that this is a church of great leadership. But many believers are not mentored properly to know that that pathway is normal. There's nothing unusual as fin and in finishing a service and not having transport back. Many people have paid that price. It's not an attack. Trek home. <laughs> you are creating a track record. Listen, what looks like an injury today, tomorrow will become your symbol of honor. Don't be ashamed of your scars, that pain. Let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark of Christ. So tomorrow when someone sees you and says, this woman, you just got a, a rich man and just married, you see, you are joking. Let me show you the scar. Look at it. The scar of the vigil. The scar of the pain. Don't let the jeep fool you. I died. Do you have a track record in the spirit? Demons see it. Don't just stand up and say in Jesus name go. You think they are fools? There is a scar my brother. You don't just speak to a man and say may your life change. Amen. And then his life changes. No. I'm being open and sincere with you tonight. There is a track record. The situation you are going through now. It looks like God is silent. Whereas heaven is cheering you. Write your story my sister. Write your story, my brother. Let it be that once upon a time I trusted God. I had Gary no sugar. I still called on him. It looked like he didn't answer. And I said, Lord, whether you bless me or not, I love you. And heaven says, you passed the test. You passed the test. It was never about lack of sugar. It was about loving me with Gary or not. That means if I give you a jeep tomorrow, you can look at that jeep and say, Jeep, I loved God before you came. And don't you ever think the sound... 
and the luxury behind you will distract me. There are many half baked believers that are sweet here and there. One million naira comes and they drive God out and say, God, I need space. This one million is too big. Sorry, I have to evacuate you for a while. God says, I'm going. No problem. You must get to a point in your life where pain does not stop you. Please listen. Some of you, as I'm speaking now, only God knows the pain. You are seated here looking at me. But there are things you are going through on account of your faith. And the devil is already lying to you. You would have married since five years if it did not matter to marry a spiritual man. But God already warned you. The first guy that just strolled around, you had a dream. God said, be careful. I've already told you that the child that is coming out of you is not a child, it's a nation. So when you see all your friends getting married, you say, oh God, why are you cheating me like this? I would have had two children now. And you sit down and you cannot seek God. And God says, I will give you one child that is equal to a city. Believers, hear me. The waiting process of building a track record with God, pastor, is the hardest phase in a believer's life. Because those are times when you will pray and it will look like God will not answer. You can sit down and malaria is killing you. And then while that is happening, sorry to use that term, someone comes and the Lord says, pray for the person. You will lay hands on the person and he falls under the anointing and leaves and says, my God, you are anointed while you are shaking like a leaf there. Say, Lord, where is the balm in Gilead? And while he's talking, you are there. Your ego is on the line and you are saying, God, why won't you answer me? He's teaching you that it's not all about miracles. It's about your trusting him. You have to trust him beyond results. Are we together? While you are serving God, somebody will just send a nonsense text. I'm seeing you backsliding. Something is wrong with your spiritual life. He said, when I'm fasting, who is this? What, what demonic insight is this brother getting from where? And God allows it to see your spiritual stability. If that one text disturbs you, how will you manage the persecution of having a crowd? Don't be fooled to think everybody will love you. It's an exam you are writing. One person just sent a text, I'm disappointed. You didn't come for the meeting. You have not gone anywhere and you're already becoming proud. And you are there waiting on God. Say, God, what did I do wrong now? You that told me to wait, can't you explain to them that I'm waiting? And God keeps quiet. And just that little test, you can't pray again. I'm proud. Am I proud? And God says, Mr. Man, on your list of membership here, you wrote 10,000. And one text has already destabilized you. Yet you want to command 10,000 people. What happens when a whole family stands and says, we hate you, you are a devil. That means you won't preach again. So God is training you. You are looking at anointing, but God is saying no. Don't you know that greatness is a burden? Much more than the crown. It takes stamina to stand on that stage. If you are not strong, it can throw you. Success is like a knife. It depends on how you hold it. You can hold it in a way that it will kill you too. What happens when people look at you and say you're a, you a lousy lady? I thought you were an anointed person. Shame on you. You go back and say, shame on me. What? I'm, I'm sorry, have you observed anything wrong with my life? <laughs> but when you have been trained in the spirit and you know him, anybody can look and say, okay, God bless you, it's your opinion. And thank God it's me and God that are needed for my success. Can you look at the storm and still smile? And they say, why are you smiling? They say, I have wired myself to smile regardless of what my eyes see. And they say, when did that happen? When I was trained. When I was trained. Pastor, have you seen people collapse because they stole their car? They, they wake up in the morning and stand in front of the garage. And say, no, no, it's a joke. Honey, where is this car? Say, I, I thought we were in the same room. I say, no, no, if, if it's a joke, stop it. My hard earned money, 15 million has disappeared like that. No, I won't let this happen. 
and the man is talking and then you find out he's not coordinated again the next thing he has fallen let me tell you i don't i'm, I'm not i know that we're human beings we react in different ways but that thing is a proof that that car is seated in a throne somewhere i'm not saying to be to be irresponsible over whatever god gives you but to fall down because of metals that's quite a level of degradation there i will search for you and i will find you and i will find you with all my heart i will lift my hands to you in worship and i will worship with all my heart seeking his face will cost you a lot you will be misunderstood your siblings you see every time you are serious with god it brings judgment to anybody who is not serious with god because your life is an epistle so usually they feel irritated let's assume for instance that these are brothers from the same family and this gentleman seems to be passionate about god one day this guy will talk to him and say oh, please don't insult us just because you are praying the other day you see it's already a reaction it will pain you let me tell you because people will look at you and say prayer warrior you have eaten and left plate here you didn't even wash it they will take little things and magnify it's not about the plate it's about the annoyance they just found a plate as the scapegoat for expression as if you are not human again you just see a beautiful lady ah this is a beautiful prayer warrior I can't believe this. You mean it? As if you will never marry again. You, you see that kind of thing? There is a price to pay. But can you pay that price and remain? What of the attacks that come? We have spoken about physical things. Let me tell you. Every time the devil sees unusual passion, he comes to find out what is going on there. Because he knows that men have a level a nominal level he won't attack you because he knows that an attack will force you to be serious with god so he just measures and finds out that you are lower than the threshold level he leaves you there just be dancing around the things of god you are not serious today you pray next tomorrow you are not serious he will leave you so that that complacency will keep you there but the day he sees unusual prayer fasting praying a night vigil you are listening to a message this one happens you send a text to all certain friends and say sorry i need time with god the devil says mark this lady what is going on in her life this is a threat and all of a sudden the principalities and powers hear you while you pray lord take all of me i dedicate my life and they hear it and they say make try to make this lady's life as miserable as possible and all of a sudden, a guy you have been with for four years now says, I'm tired of this, your church thing. My dear, I'm going to look for a correct wife, not a stupid girl like you. And you stand there and your humanity eats you up. And you're saying, Lord, but it's not fair. And God says, you just stay and watch what I make out of you. It takes a lot to be mighty and to be used by God to become a voice that a generation will hear it's not all about just mentorship and impartation it's a track record Jesus himself was on that cross not even Jesus escaped this naked 33 year old man and he said Eloi Eloi Labak uh, what, what is it Lama Sabatani why have you forsaken me god you forsook me you turned your face away from me tempted like all men yet without sin what is my crime no it's not a crime i have to turn my face so that man can be able to look at me it's a lonely path when you are getting to be great because there are times that god will isolate any human being that can help you because he wants to be your only help so in a strange way, those who would have helped you all of a sudden, somebody you know that your tears 
You just say, Uncle, help me. And in five minutes, an alert comes. You now say, Uncle, help me. Plenty times. And no text returns. It's not always an attack. God is saying, you are in a season in your life where I need to teach you that I am supplier. There were times in my life, let me tell you, I did everything I knew to do. You see, this is, this is a revival conference. And so I'm, I'm, I'm opening up to you. You will see what God is doing in my life now and just think, oh, every, I just snap my finger and say, Lord, where are you? He say, I'm here. It's not true. There were times I did everything I knew to do. Lord, where are you? Anytime you hear God silent, it's because he's carrying you. It's not because he has left you. Let me repeat. Anytime you call on him and it looks like he's silent, then you are not the one carrying yourself. He's holding you. Lord, where are you? Help me. Help me. Send bread. Even if I'm not obeying this principle, let me eat today. Then you can continue teaching me tomorrow. And the heavens still remain closed. There is something that that tears must do to you because it is in your crying you gain compassion tomorrow now when you stand before a lady who says pastor I've not eaten there is a memory bank in your experience you know what not eating there are people who are too innocent to be used there is no track record that relates to and let me tell you another thing the ministry God is sending you to will determine the experiences you must endure. You must take a sample from everything you will be saving men from. It must be captured in your experience. This is a painful revelation. Believe me. Pastor, I don't just walk in the healing ministry today just because I'm anointed. I've had fungal infection that ate my head. For From nowhere it just came. I said, what is all this nonsense? Many years ago. I was a very little boy. And that thing happened to me. Pastor, they stopped me from going to the dining hall to eat with other students. So I would stay alone. And sometimes there would not be water in that school. I would have to put my head in the rain outside. So that rain would just fall so that I can rub a lotion. If I pay for people or I buy maybe bonds or something, they won't collect Except I pay and then they will pick. So today, when I see someone somewhere and the Lord opens my eyes to see that someone is in pain, the anointing, you see me point my hand there to that gentleman? You see, it's because of compassion. It's not just anointing. I'm not faking it. Oh, be healed just for the name. Because when God opens your eyes, you remember when I stand and I see someone crying, there is something in my life to relate with. What do you have in your track record that can create? Compassion is not generic. To be kind-hearted doesn't mean it to be compassionate. There must be a history that can attach you to people's pain. Please, if you're a man of God here, hear me. Don't waste your pain. It's a track record. You will need it for the people God is sending you to. There are many people who want the anointing and don't have the time. Pastor, every time after our meeting, now it's, it's a unique model for us. I counsel people. I went, to, I went to bed yesterday. God is my witness. I think it was two, three. I returned home past one because people come from all over within and outside this nation and the only time I have to see them is just that night. I have to see them. You must have compassion. When I go on stage by 6 or 6 that you're 7 and I stand there till 1. It's not enough to say I have anointing. Do you have the heart? Do you have an experience enough to see a woman who stands and she's talking to you and can't speak English well. And say, madam, so you are not even smart. Give me chance. I'm an educated person. It's compassion that will keep you to say, madam, what can you speak? Yoruba, find somebody. Interpret it. Don't try to struggle speaking English. I'm smart, but I'm not a fool. Speak what you can speak. I've been there. We do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings. It's the reason why many people are not anointed. They can't be touched. 
Sometimes this, this, our sense of over-civilization sometimes destroys us. It's wonderful, but be fair to people. A track record. That's why God called a solemn assembly here. Some of you probably got by track. Some of you right now as you are sitting, your wallet is empty. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't mind the people who laugh at you. They are needed in that history. Let them laugh. Mockery is a mystery. So that the day God blesses you, you can stand and look at someone who says, Sir, five naira, this is all I have. And you say, you were richer than me when God was training me. And say, you, this multi-millionaire. So there was a time you didn't have anything. And you say, look, let me lift the cloth I'm wearing. See the scar. Is a scar. Let's not be ashamed of our scars. If we are ashamed of our scars, we are not going to help a generation because we will create a portrait that is not accurate. Many of you are surprised now as I tell you some of these things because in your mind you see what God is doing in and through Apostle Joshua Selman and you just believe this guy was uniquely fortunate. My God. When you look at me in the realm of the spirit, what you will see is blood dripping. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Hallelujah. But hear me. When your heart becomes committed and drawn to God, then my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you this. The investment of the spirit that will come upon your life as a reward for that sacrifice. Nothing in this life, nothing in time can pay for it. You see, there are things when you have in this life you are afraid because it doesn't last. But when God gives you his presence, when God opens you up to his glory, when God opens your spirit to the realities of this kingdom, out of your sacrifice, come sir, one day, prayer and fasting like this is a moment where through all of these experiences, you get to a point where your flesh, are we together now? That flesh dies. The object of your fasting is him. Here he comes before you. And he says, son, this is the final bus stop. All that you went through was to see me. Your mother did not see me. Your father did not see me. Finally, through all the hunger, listen to me, through all the disappointment, through all the delays, you have finally come to that place. This is the place of encounter. That's what God is doing. Household of David, hear me. I'm activating something. This is the place of surrender. That's where he's leading you. Through your 30 days of prayer and fasting. This is the place where my flesh gives way. Do to me what you want. That's what God has been doing for these 30 days. Here I am in your presence. Do to me what you want. This is the language of dead people. I'm open before you, Lord. Do to me what you want. It's not an ordinary Christian that prays this prayer. Here I am in your presence. Oh, do to me what you want. I'm open before you, Lord. Do to me what you want. This is the place of encounter. Man of God, this is where you need to go. That's the threshing floor of Naboth. The place where you encounter him. This is the place of surrender. 
This is the place where my flesh gives way. Do to me what you want. Listen, look at me. The pride, the jealousy, the flesh that are in us does not just live by default. Something must happen in your life to make you see the vanity of the flesh to live it. When people look at me and say, man of God, you are humble. I say, I'm not humble. I just passed through something and found out pride is no longer there. It's not something that you just say, I want to be humble. No, sir. When your ego is stung and stung again until there is nothing there, the name of that state is humility. Are we together? Yes. It is not natural to not laugh and jeer at others. It is, it is, it is, um, it is, uh, I mean, it is, it's natural, I meant to say. It's natural to hate. It's natural to fight people. It's natural for jealousy. All these attributes of the flesh. So you pack them and say, Lord, anoint me. He said, no, I don't anoint people like that. It is fire first before the glory. It is fire first before the glory. Please, Mike, take it higher for me. It is fire first before the glory. The, the, listen, listen, listen. When there is a sacrifice, then there is a fire. Then the glory fills the temple. That's the pattern. The sacrifice first, then the fire. That fire phase of a believer's life, you can't pray it away. You can't fast it away. You, these are the kinds of cups that you can't say, let it go off me. Uh -uh. You only take the grace to take it. Master, can, we, can you grant that in this kingdom we sit at your left and right? He said, can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? Lord, I want to have a mighty ministry and see the power of God heal the sick. I want revelation and utterance. He says, can you pay the price? It's not a gift. This is the place of encounter. Just a simple, please. Mike, please talk to them, please. I need them to work. No, 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 not just clash in the simple. Let them understand what to do, please. Listen, brothers and sisters. I'm seeing the power of God touch some people here. Just like two. Please help them. I saw the angels of the Lord just moving there. We're going to pray shortly. You see. There is a track record. That you must have in the spirit. There are many of us here. Proud young men and women. I love you. What you are receiving tonight is discipleship. I love you. That's why you hear me talking. I, I don't resent the body. But there are many proud people who just believe on their own. Oh, no, I'm ready for ministry. I'm ready. Just because someone fell here and there in your meeting. My brother, there are other parameters that need to be in place. When you feel ready, it doesn't mean you are ready. It's one thing to feel ready, but it's another thing to be approved. 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 Where your flesh gives way. There are many people who need this work. Some of us here are looking at me. That's why we are praying. Lord, this jealousy. And God says, no. There has to be a circumcision. I love you and it's true I will anoint you. But have you noticed every time they clap for anybody who is not you. Something, that something is what must be put on the threshold. So that it be dealt with. This celebrity mentality as wonderful as it is. You can't be great that way. Let the rest clap. God will allow you. But you who they are clapping for, you must remain on your knees while they clap. It is your most secure position. If you ever allow the clap to lift you up, you are going down. That is something you are trained in the secret place. He shows you. When people say all the things they say about me, I know how much all of you love me with all my heart. I love you too. But you see, every time you clap for me, I turn back and I say, Lord, help me. They are only clapping for me because I represent a face of an encounter to a generation. Keep me that way. 
Do you know how difficult it is to lie down and roll before God when the nations are clapping for you? When they are insulting you, there is a reason. But when they are clapping, retreats are times when our flesh is caught. There are some of you when 500,000 entered your hand, you didn't even tight. And then to your shock, you found out that for two weeks, you didn't even pray. You came late to church and early to leave. You greeted the other usher and said, don't shout at me, please. Everybody knew that 100,000 came. And yet you say, oh God, that 30 million, God said, 30 what? Respect money. No. I gave you 500,000. You misbehave as if you are not a child of God. There needs to be a circumcision so that you can sit down. And when people know your true word, they say, half of this was not told me. And you are this humble. Tonight, this is what we are going to do. There is a circumcision. Listen, listen, listen. It is always a sacrifice. Then the fire. Then the glory. Say it after me. The sacrifice. Then the fire. Then the glory. One more time. The sacrifice. Then the fire. Then the glory. It has nothing to do with ministry. Even in business, the sacrifice then the fire it is at that point where the refiner's fire is roasting out everything that looks like flesh is the hardest part of your life when you pass through the fire when you walk through it god where are you he says remain there because that fire is building you through that fire love is planted in you through that fire, you find out that hate goes away. And you who someone will talk and say, I'm an angry person. Ask my mother, we're all like that. Pass through that fire and see what culture you come out of. As soon as you pass through that fire, someone will talk to you and say, stupid lady. You say, God bless you. You say, it's a joke. What happened? Fire. 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 What is the big deal about a man of God? Why should I respect him? I'm a man of God. He's a man of God too. Is it just because he's ahead of me? Please don't harass me to respect Pastor Shola. That statement is, is, a, is a spiritual medical condition. That statement, the ability to speak that arrogant is a sign. Anybody that knows God knows you are in trouble. But let the fire pass through. The next time you see Pastor, good afternoon. Ah, man of God, you just finished a conference. Yes, sir. Still, good afternoon. What happened? Fire did something to you. You can know people's spiritual states by their communication. It's a reflection of their spiritual understanding, which is a reflection of what the secret place has done in their lives or otherwise. Tonight, household of David, we are at the threshing floor of Naboth. And what God is going to do is that he will grant us grace. We are going to cry and say, Lord, I'm not afraid of the fire. Let that sacrifice, whatever it will take, Lord, I listen, listen, sit down first. I'm establishing a prayer request. Lord, I used to love you. I don't know what happened to me. I'm surprised to see that my Bible is now a nuisance. I'm surprised to see that my prayer life, when I was in the university, I was a prayer secretary. Lord, I don't know what is becoming of my life now. You need to help me. You see, let me tell you, when you are broken and contrite, you attract his presence. When you stand there feeling I am okay, retreats are not for sinners. They are for men who want more. There are times that you say, Lord, I thank you, but I'm easily discouraged. The spirit of faith is not yet at work in me. Lord, grace. Every time I pray and I ask you to give me something, every time pastor declares over my life, once I wait three, four days, no results, I'm discouraged. It means there is something I need to get. Hallelujah. There are many of you right now. You are about to make very costly decisions because what God told you, it looks like time is going. Please, Saul, we can't wait for Samuel. Why should we wait for what is special about Samuel? Bring me the objects of sacrifice and you are about to lose the throne of your life. And God sent this retreat to say, stop. Before you ruin your destiny, return back to the sacred place. Show me a man that has missed it no matter how far and can find his way to the secret place. I'll show you a man who will shoot out like a plant 
out of the earth again. Retreats are mysteries that create stability and sustainability in our Christian experience. Notice a man that is a man of the secret place. You will not see a challenge for too long in his life. You will see pride. You are noticing it grow. And then later you will see him for one week. He comes out and everything is gone. The refiner's fire. The refiner's fire. Fire is not just for deliverance alone. Fire is for refining. Refining. Lord help me. I'm a man of God. But in the last one month, my appetite for women, I need help fast. Don't sit down and say I'm alright until you die and the devil destroys you. Ah, this sister came for prayers and I'm, immediately I'm praying. My mind is going somewhere. Lord, I need help. And God says, you're welcome. Come. There is a place where men find refuge. It's better to be open in the secret place than to be disgraced openly by the devil. Whatever you tolerate for long in your life will be what will destroy you. I'm a man of God, but I slapped my wife. Sorry is not the answer. Go to the secret place. That I could slap her means I can stab her tomorrow if God does not help me. I slapped my husband and I said, I'm human. You see, that means that humanity can, you can carry a knife and tear your husband into two and say, sorry, I'm human. We live in a world where we celebrate our humanity. People do foolish things and say we're human. It's true we're human, but what then is the advantage of the secret place? What then is the advantage of the presence of God? Please, let's love God, but let's not let westernization fool us. We do every kind of nonsense and say we are humans. I insult you. I say I will, I'm, I'm human. At the time I was insulting you, I was depressed. There are many worries in life. Is the worry unique to you? It is your spirituality that will help you. Otherwise, we'll make a mess of our destinies in the name of humanity. Is God speaking to someone tonight? Yes, sir. There are some of you retreats at times when God tells you you are running too fast. Did you hear what I'm saying? You are running too fast. There can be a man of God. You want this conference today. Tomorrow you want this. You want to build 10 branches. Then at the same time, you want to start TV ministry. Then at the same time, and during the retreat, God will say, out of the 10 points, only two are my will now. And he said, Lord, I thought we just danced that day. We thought we had you. Say that's why you needed a retreat because that was not me. And you just caught my people know my, my leader. Sometimes we discuss a lot of things, very ambitious things we want to do. And then when they hear me quiet about it, they don't ask me again, sir. What of that? They already know what happened. Ah, we are going to do this. And then later they feel me just come out. I say, What were we discussing before? Let's and I skip that thing quietly. They just know that. Uh, God has not spoken. I never do anything in my life until God speaks. I've seen the wastage and the vanity of moving when he's not leading you. The pain is that you must come back. God will not go and meet you there. He will wait and say, okay. Lord, where are you? He say, I'm here. Okay, so you come back. Listen, let me prove it to you. The first time God cut the rock for Moses. The second time he said, Moses, cut the rock and come and meet me where you met me there. Cut it by yourself with your hands. That memory will not allow you to crash it out of anger again. I did it free for you and you carried it and smashed it before you and then turned it into powder. But now you use your hand and cut it. I don't know if there's someone here that is tired of your flesh interrupting the grace and the glory of God. You are one leg in today one leg out. I know you don't like the message, but this is the price for the glory. The same way a doctor gives you a tablet, you say, doctor is bitter. He say, are you ready to be, to be fine? He say, yes, man. He say, swallow it. Swallow it quietly. And you do it religiously for four or five days. And you see that there's improvement. Tomorrow, when you stand in the television and people are watching you and saying, BC, this lady has risen this far. You would turn and say, household of David, thank you. Because it was in that meeting God taught me that pain is not demonic. It was in that meeting I learned 
you will never rise to a position of greatness with flesh being alive. Listen, you don't have to be a sinner for flesh to be there. You must crush it and trust God. Once you pamper the flesh, it will destroy you. I say it again. Once you pamper the flesh, man of God, once you pamper the flesh, it will tear you into pieces. You need to come before God. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Lord, I come before you. Help me. I'm in household of David. I'm anointed is true, but Lord, I need help fast. This is my appetite for money. I'm anointed, but I can still live need be. Once my account is 500,000, I'm already fidgeting. Once my account is 50,000, I can lie. I can change my message to raise money. It's a weakness. It can be nailed tonight so that you will come out refined as gold. Listen. Tonight, I want you to open up your tendencies and vulnerabilities before God and cry and say, Lord, please work on it now so that it does not destroy me when a nation is looking up to me. It is not when a generation now looks at you, you represent an inspiration. This is my prayer many times when I'm in the secret place. I say, Lord, please, if there is anything in my life, work on it. I represent too much to a generation. There are too many people who are waiting on my work with God to, to, to ginger them. What happens if all of these people just hear something tomorrow and they say, this person that has inspired, yes, they will still love you, but you have corrupted a track record. Someone looks, God uses your face to encourage someone to continue rising spiritually. There is a price. Don't ever pamper the flesh. I'm not condemning you. Kill it right from the inception. When that seed is sown, lust, pride, immorality, name it. You don't like my, the message I'm preaching this night? Please like it. Please like it. In the name of Jesus, like it. This is the secret to power and influence and grace more than you can imagine where your voice becomes like fire. It looks like God owes you his presence. You make one utterance and shift lives. It's not magic. It's not a gift. It's a track record. Hallelujah. We're going to pray tonight. There's a lot to pray about. There's a lot to pray. If you don't have a prayer point from everything I've said, you need to be born again. There is a serious there is a call to a cry. When we cry, don't just wait for any usher to touch you because the ushers too are going to be crying and praying for their own lives. Are we together? In a few minutes, I'm going to be challenging us, the instrumentalists who just, just soak in the atmosphere, just give us whatever it is. And everybody here is going to find a place, whether you are inside or outside. We're going to say, Lord, I come to you. I've been waiting for a man to drum this truth. I've known in my spirit that there is something wrong, but thank God I've been waiting for a moment where someone will nail it on point. Thank you, Lord, for anointing Pastor Shola to organize this meeting. It's called a total experience. We have other dimensions we are going to talk about, but this is the foundation. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to hear me. I speak to you this way because I love you. There is no other way to be great in the kingdom. There is no shortcut. Are we together? In the next 10 minutes, praise the Lord. I know that those outside, there may not be a point of convenience. Even if you have to stand, you have to find a corner somewhere. Those inside here, you are just going to find a convenient corner while the worship team, I mean the, the instrumentalists, just, just flow, you are going to cry before God. Please, lay your golden crown. I'm a man of God. Congratulations. But we are going to cry. I will join you, all of us together. We are going to cry before God and say, Lord, I can't lie again. I, you have to win this war tonight. You have to win this war tonight. Go ahead, find somewhere. Pray. Your holy presence 
Just pray, forget about me. Living in me. You are my daily bread. You are my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. For you, Shena Malana Mariana, and I am lost without you. I'm lost without you. your refiner's fire prune this habit in my life oh God I've been crying for 30 days I cry I cry of God but I cry for help I know that I'm a woman of God but I cry for help I know I'm a businessman I've placed other things above you the truth is I love money more than you the truth is I love power more than you the truth is I love titles more than you You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all.
of me I surrender it's not a special number let it be a declaration from your heart whatever you ask of me I surrender Lord, I lay aside the pride. Let it die tonight. I've been given an excuse that is my background. That's how we are in our family. But tonight, oh God, I release myself. I give up the lust. I give up the anger. I give up the jealousy. Lord, this is for real. I'm not just being emotional. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. Lord, what is it in my life that I cannot hand over to you? Tonight I hand over. Is it the car? Is it the house? Is it my reputation? Is it my salary? Lord, what have I exalted above you? Is it ministry? Is it anointing? Is it business? Is it fame? Is it my accomplishment? We're rounding up. Just a few more minutes and we're done. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. You provide the fire. I'll provide the sacrifice. That sacrifice is you. of David.
space that my death will create the space that that circumcision creates when pride leaves it will leave a space when jealousy leaves it will leave a space fill that space fill it with more of you fill it with your glory I want to run over hallelujah I want to pray for you that if there is anything in your life that is corrupting your Christian testimony I stand for the God of heaven and I pray for you this night I separate you from it forever Pornography, masturbation, immorality, pride, jealousy, flesh. In the name of Jesus, I separate you from it. I separate you from it. I separate you from it. Listen, if there is any appetite that is captured in your experience and is not of the Christ. You may have been tolerating it. You may not like it, but you have found out you are a slave to it. I stand before the God of heaven and in the name that is above all names, let the fire from heaven that separates, separate you right now. Hear me? Please just help them. I declare in the name that is above all names whatever has taken the place of God in your life it may be a good thing it may even be something God gave you but I'm stretching my hands now that fire as that fire comes upon you tomorrow we'll have time to pray for the sick but as that fire comes on you it must find someone tonight I declare that fire reorders everything in your life and keeps God in his rightful position. Hear me. If there is anyone, especially you are part of this spiritual family, there is any association that you are part of that is strangling your Christian life. You love God, but your friends don't love God. And you, you come and receive prophecies here, but you go back and they rubbish your experience in the name of Jesus. Jakatos kapata lekete prende sekete balakata jabras kateba shona kasiana hasa. In the name of Jesus, let there be a separation between you and those associations. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen. There are many of you, the grace to pray has gone. You are not bad. The grace just dried up. You cannot consciously, you don't love God enough to go for a retreat on your own. Church retreat, yes. Departmental retreat, yes. But, but that on your own, you say, I need God. I pray for you. Whatever must happen to you tonight, in the name of Jesus, the passion and it will infect you is like a cancer. I declare, may that hunger land upon your life now. The Holy Spirit used to wake you 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and you will pray, but something happened. And all of a sudden, his voice is not even clear. I decree and declare, in the mighty name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, I shift you back to that realm where you hear his voice. Listen, there are many of us I'm praying because your vulnerabilities are too much. We have to pray. Some of you are unusually emotional. It's not just biological, it's demonic. Listen, I want to pray for you. It's demonic. The devil plays it. Anything just goes. The self-restraint, the capacity to say no is not there. 
anything can happen. Let me just preach my old school message tonight. That good old message that will prune everything until you carry the glory. That excessive emotional, you just say, oh, I think it's just, it's just me, it's just hormonal. It's just, no, no. If you allow your emotions, they will tear you into pieces and ruin your Christian experience. The world that is looking at you and looking up to you will not hear the fact that you were emotional. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, the grace, the stability of mind, of spirit, of emotions that will help you preserve the testimony of God upon your life, receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Especially my adorable sisters. Dear sisters, hear me. That you are a woman does not mean that your emotions just go haywire and let the devil destroy you. I declare the stability of Deborah. Let it come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me give you a little assignment where you are back tomorrow. I know that many, the impartation, and please don't miss tomorrow's meeting. Even if you are not a member of Household of David, um, just make that sacrifice for tomorrow. It's my last session. It will be a waste to do an impartation and to pray and do all of these things. This is what you need. The assignment I'm giving you is please take at least 15 minutes when you go back home. Any 15 minutes before morning, just take some time alone with God. Even if you are married, just plead for some 15 minutes and stay and trust God. List out the things that must get out of your life and pray for that 15 minutes. Hold it as a request. Lord, this must live. Lord, this must live. Because the fire that is coming upon you is a fire that your generation will celebrate you for. Your wealth is in that fire. Your greatness is in that fire. Your glory is in that fire. There is a prophetic word for this church, but I will say it tomorrow. There is something God has told me about house of David, household of David. But tomorrow I will say it. I want to say it in the open and I want to say it on air. A shifting, I'm telling you, is coming to this church. It's true. It will be so strange. I, I'm not, I don't want to give you the details, but it will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The gentleman on white, my friend, lift your hands. I'm seeing an angel pouring something like oil on your head. That's what I'm seeing. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, whatever that is to do in your life, I declare let it be done now. I, I'm not ministering this night, but the gentleman holding a red phone. The Lord is saying I should tell you that you are going through a season of pruning with him. That but after that pruning, your glory will shine. That's what God is saying to tell you. Father, we thank you for tonight. In the name of Jesus, you have led us thus far. I pray, oh God, that this message will not just be a charge. Let it be an encounter that will produce results in our lives. You have given us cause to go back and think about our lives. It is not unto condemnation. It's a purification of the spirit that will grant us access to receive true fire. Therefore, Lord, I pray that as we submit ourselves tonight to pray, to seek your face, grant that by the operation of your spirit, everything that needs to leave us, let it leave, so that whatever needs to come will come. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you. Shall we give our offering tonight? Oh, blessed be your name.